Now on WKRG News 5. The Gators give it a try, but come up toothless against the Tide. Next stop for Alabama is the College Football Championship Series. And big changes are coming to Fort Condi. The new attractions come with a new cost to you. The radar showing rain to start off your Sunday morning. I'll have your forecast coming up. From WKRG News 5, the Gulf Coast News Leader, the news starts now. Good morning. Thanks for getting up with News 5 this morning. I'm Chad Petrie. I don't know who's watching, but I'm glad you are. First on five, close to 75,000 people filled the Georgia Dome Saturday to watch the Alabama Crimson Tide roll over the University of Florida in the 2016 SEC Championship game. The final score, Alabama 54, Florida 16. News 5's Haley from Minogue was on the sideline and spoke with Alabama players after the game. In a crazy but not necessarily shocking game, the University of Alabama defeated the University of Florida for the SEC Championship. Florida may have drawn the first blood, but after that, it was mistake and another mistake and things quickly got chippy. Alabama put up 33 points in the first half, the most points ever scored in a first half in championship history. Man, I'm just excited that my boys came out here to play, bro. We just came out here and fit handle business like we supposed to do. Florida quarterback Austin Appleby had 261 yards and two touchdowns, but also threw three interceptions. You know, our guys fought. We got a lot of guys out. A lot of guys had to step in and step up. And all in all, I'm really proud of what we fought. Damian Harris rushed for 86 yards. Man, it's a great feeling. Getting a, getting a chair a moment like that with these guys, man, it's just it's incredible. Getting to do it in front of all these great fans for the third game in a row. I mean, I don't, I don't really know how to put it into words yet. They'll celebrate now, but they're already focusing on the future. It's all about what we do. We're not worried about what other teams do, where we fall in the playoffs. We're just worried about what we do, how we practice and prepare for it, and just getting ready to play another game. Reporting in the Georgia Dome, I'm Haley Minogue, News 5. And while it may be Sunday, today is a big day in college football. The teams will find out which bowl games they'll be headed to this afternoon, and fans will know which teams will compete in the college football playoffs as well. And if you want to grab the new Alabama SEC gear, Academy Sports and Outdoors is carrying the merchandise. They were open late last night for fans wanting to be the first to buy these newly released clothing items. We've now got a new side crime alert for Pensacola and surrounding areas. Pensacola police are searching for a man who shot at an officer and then ran away Friday night. The incident happening in the area of Torres Avenue and Tunis Street. Police went looking for the suspect after he approached a woman in a car with a gun. Officer Matthew Mercado found the suspect on 6th Avenue near Tunis Street. The suspect fired one shot on the officer then or the and then fled. The officer was not injured in the shooting. Anyone with information about the crime is asked to contact the Pensacola Police Department. In politics, President-elect Donald Trump's con conversation with Taiwan's president Friday still causing a bit of controversy. Trump is the first president or president-elect to speak with a Taiwanese leader since diplomatic relations with the country were cut in 1979. The conversation led China to lodge a diplomatic protest with the U.S. Meanwhile, Mr. Trump still needs to pick half his cabinet, including his nominees for secretary of state. Closes, uh, sources close to the transition team say the president-elect is moving away from two frontrunners, former New York City Mayor Rudy Giuliani and Mitt Romney. Mr. Trump also tweeted this weekend vowing to keep jobs in the U.S. after finding out an Indiana manufacturer is moving its operations to Mexico. Jill Stein is giving up her bid for an election recount in Pennsylvania. The Green Party presidential candidate made the announcement Saturday night. She said voters who joined her petition could not pay a million-dollar bond that a state court requested Friday. Stein also pushed for recounts in Wisconsin and Michigan after reports of possible hacking surfaced. However, there has been no credible evidence of election tampering. Stein plans to make a major announcement about the recounts outside Trump Tower in New York Monday. Tourism volunteers are getting ready for a big move. The city of Mobile recently announced they were moving the city's Welcome Center from Fort Condi to the History Museum just across the street. Stimson Chief of Staff Colby Cooper said this will help improve downtown Mobile and increase tourism options. Volunteers say they're sad to leave the fort. The Welcome Center will not reopen until December 12th. Closing our visitor center for 
13 days in order to make a change seems to me to be kind of a lack of adequate planning. We've had time to do that and I'm very concerned that our merchants, our restauranteurs, our hoteliers have all been affected by having the visitor center closed for 13 days. Discussions about moving the center began last January. At the time, officials talked about a new location with better parking and easier access to the interstate, but this move doesn't address those concerns. And Fort Condi will no longer be a free tourist attraction sometime soon. The city of Mobile recently announced activation management would be running the fort. Starting sometime next year, you'll have to pay admission once upgrades are finished. Manager Scott Tyndall estimates admission prices will be around $7 for adults and $5 for children. He says the improvements to the fort will help attract new visitors. And this isn't the first time visitors have had to pay for the fort. The city charged admission from 1976 to 1983. If you're planning to cross the bay today, we have a traffic alert to tell you about again. The Bankhead Tunnel will be closed until 5 tomorrow morning. This is a live look at the tunnel. Alternate routes include the Wallace Tunnel and the Africatown Bridge. The closure will allow Alabama Power to do some routine maintenance on the tunnel yet again. Now, Melissa Constanzer with First Alert Weather. 606 right now, Melissa Constanzer in with our first check of the forecast. And I'll tell you, I heard it just before we were walking into the studio. Rain. There is rain out there today. <laughs> Pretty hard, too. Yeah, there's a lot of it on the radar right now. So let's start off with that because it is a busy morning. The radar is showing lighting up with greens, yellows, even a few oranges out there. So we are getting anywhere from light to even heavy rainfall at this time. Of course, it's all coming in from the south and west and streaming in from the Gulf. There are even a few thunderstorms mixing in. This one has actually created a special marine warning. So let's take a closer look at that thunderstorm again. And a lot of heavy rain. This will squeeze into the code and by Labattery area in the next few minutes here and then work its way up through uh, over the Mobile Bay, I should say, and in towards Loxley as it goes over Daphne and uh, Fairhope. So again, a lot of rain, even some thunder. Right now, some gusty winds out there as well. So keep in mind, this is all a typical setup when we get this heavy rainfall in certain locations. And it is now working its way up Interstate 65 all the way up to even Thomasville, which I have off the map right now. But you are getting heavy rain. This is what it looks like outside this morning. Kind of a dreary, soggy start to a Sunday. Temperatures in the 50s and a bit of an east-northeast wind. All of us hanging out in the 50s, 60s, or 70s is actually pretty mild in Gulf Shores. We didn't cool off because we had the cloud cover overnight. And, of course, there is a little bit more rain to come this morning, even a few thunderstorms this afternoon, and maybe severe weather tomorrow. Uh, that forecast coming up in a few minutes. Thank you, Melissa. Christmas parades all over the place. A look at the Dauphin Island Parade. When we come back, time now 608 on this Saturday, Sunday, Sunday morning. For legendary products at affordable prices, visit your neighbors at Sun South John Deere. For the last 11 years, you've watched WKRG News 5 at 6 o'clock, then the Andy Griffith Show at 630. And while things in Mayberry pretty much stay the same, News 5 is changing. We're expanding to a full hour of local news, weather, and sports from 6 to 7 p.m. And that means our friends from Mayberry will be moving. You'll see them weeknights at 930 on the CW55. So more coverage you can count on from 6 to 7. See for yourself why change is good. A burger smothered in A1 butter, topped with sizzling steak and crispy onions for just a buck 99? That's high fashion flavor at a thrift store price. The A1 buttery steak burger, checkers and rallies, fast foodies know the deal. Special pie. Southeastern Salvage just received over 120,000 rolls of designer holiday ribbon. 350 styles in stock. Embroidered, jacquard, beaded, velvet, embossed, plaid, printed, metallic. Currently selling in high-end catalogs for $24 to $39 a roll. Our price, $5 a roll. Two and a half inches by 10 yard and four inches by five yard rolls. Holiday stockings, $5 each. Tree skirts and table toppers, $8 each. Southeastern Salvage Home Emporium, I-65 Mobile. After a car wreck, demand Richard Mather. If you've been injured in a car accident, you need your lawyer to be two things. Someone you can talk to about your accident. And someone who will fight the insurance company to get the money you deserve. Nice to you and tough on them. So give me a call today and we'll get started today. If you've been injured in a car wreck, 
Demand Richard Mather. The consultation is free, so call 432-2580. Christmas nights of lights, the Hank is merry and bright. Mobile's largest light display is an unbelievable sight. The Hank has been transformed for the holidays. Drive through and marvel in awe at over one million lights as they twinkle in time to your favorite holiday classics. Make Christmas nights of lights at the Hank your family tradition. Shows start at 5.30 p.m. each night. Rain or shine at Hank Aaron Stadium. Now through January 1st. Visit ChristmasNightsOfLights.com. Sorry, girl, but I'm not swinging at that deal. I get my pick of one of three sandwiches, seasoned fries, an apple pie, and even a drink for just three bucks. Welcome to the big leagues, Wendy. Rallies and checkers. Fast foodies know the deal. Learn the elements of comedy. 4K resolution. Next time we Skype, I'm going to count all those nostril hairs. The Big Bang Theory. Weekdays at 3 on WKRG News 5. Good morning to you, Gulf Coast. Here's a quick look outside. One of our News 5 Gulf Quest cameras taking a look at downtown Mobile on this pre-dawn and also rainy Sunday morning. Rainy yeah. today, and I'm so glad that the rain held off for those Christmas parades out there because we had quite a few going on mm -hmm. yesterday. There was one in Robertsdale, Sarah Land, and you were at one as well yesterday. Yeah, I was actually the Grand Marshal of the Dolphin Island Christmas Parade. Uh, this was my view as I strolled down the parade route. It was so much fun. It was such an honor being the Grand Marshal there. Um, obviously, lots of beads, moon pies, the works, and you know, just a lot of fun strolling through that parade. They had the Aberstriers there as well as um, the, oh gosh, completely drawing a blank now, the girls in the big dresses. Oh, that would be the Azalea, Azalea Trail, Trail maids. maids. There we go. And, of course, the crew of uh, Dolphin Island, Mrs., Junior Mrs., Little Mrs., all sorts of stuff. So it was a lot of fun. The only thing I don't like about uh, parades on Dolphin Island is that it takes a while to leave. Did you have trouble leaving after it was all over? You know, I didn't because by the time we got back around, it had actually cleared out and stuff. And I wasn't in a big rush because who doesn't love being on Dolphin Island? It, Let's face it. It is a very <laughs> nice place. Now, it's not every day that you see a meteorologist at a parade. Mm -hmm. It's also not every day you see something like this. Check this Ooh. out. John Coaster and his wife went kayaking in Watsonville, California. They were in for a surprise when that guy, a sea otter, swam up to the boat, Aww. hopped aboard the kayak. Coaster said he felt ready to deal with the otter after receiving a lesson on how to handle otters from the kayak rental company. He used the paddle to act like he was going to push the otter off, and the animal eventually jumped back into the water. I think he just wanted to sun himself a little. You know? Maybe, but Free ride? I'm on. renting that kayak. That's not your space. That's my kayak space. Okay. You've all got right. all this water Chad's here. Chad's going to be like poking at it with the paddle as much as he can. Gently. <laughs> Gently, gently of just, course. Hey, hey, buddy. Hey, get come out. On. <laughs> come on, move. Please, please move. Well, we glad, glad they got some pictures of it. It is pretty cool and not a common sight, I would think. <laughs> very, very nice. And another not common sight that we have had today, this morning, is this lady, are we doing that or are we uh, going right, right to weather? I'm so sorry. Uh, yeah, we'll do weather. Okay. Uh, it, it's rain because we, we've been seeing that uh, mm -hmm. this morning. And uh, this is the first like really heavy rainfall that we've had in a couple of days. Yeah. And it's good to see it a bit more on a regular basis. Yeah, we like seeing it. And it's nice when it comes through in the morning because that typically means just some nice rain on the roof. Maybe you wake up and go back to sleep. But stay with us through the next few hours here as we map out your forecast. Radar showing, yeah, there's a lot of rain. And if you don't have it yet, you'll probably get it shortly in the next two hours because it is working across our area. Basically streaming up along Interstate 65, but it is also moving enough to the east that I think everyone right through Destin will see rain at some point this morning. So the moderate to heavy rainfall out there, lots of yellows and actually I do want you to notice this thunderstorm working into the Dolphin Island area. It actually looks like it's jumping a little bit further to the east so Fort Morgan and in towards a point clear there. Watch out because that one's actually been noted as a strong thunderstorm with some gusty winds. Not severe though. Severe threat low this morning but we are going to keep an eye on it. I think we get this wave through this morning and we'll get a break then because you're noticing this line kind of split apart so I do think we get a break this afternoon. It's not going to be a washout all day long but we do have a marginal risk for severe weather through today. So that means maybe a few pop-up afternoon showers. Some of them could turn into thunderstorms and we could see some gusty or even damaging winds with that. 
not a big threat for tornadoes or anything to that nature. And we are at the lowest point of the scale for the severe weather outlook. Now that will change heading into tomorrow. But for today, we need the rain and we're getting it anywhere from 5 to 10 inches below average still for the yearly rainfall totals. We will work on improving this as we, as, excuse me, lessening the drought, improving our rainfall totals as we go through the next few days here in this week. Right now, the analysis here, you can see actually this is a big stalled out front just off the shoreline, and this is what's kind of spurring up some of that moisture. Eventually, this will start to lift to the north and east, and as it does so, then we will get warm, humid, more showers and thunderstorms heading into tomorrow. So right now, the live look from Dolphin Island, minus the cursor in the screen, is very cloudy and wet start. Glad we didn't start out that way yesterday morning for the parade. Uh, also a similar sight as you look north from our Alpha Insurance camera. Notice the wet streets glistening. It is very wet out there. So if you are traveling early this morning, you need the headlights and allow some extra time because again, those roads are quite wet. 56 in Mobile currently. 70 though still in Gulf Shores. It's 51 in Leakesville. Kind of got a mishmash of numbers, but largely 60s along the coast here. And the breeze still strong out of the east. This picks up today out of the south East, it's going to create seas of three to five feet, which means strong uh, high risk rather for rip currents, and that's something to note. Notice this morning again that rainfall working through our area. I think everyone has a chance for rain this morning. It lessens through the afternoon and evening, but isn't completely gone. So yes, there'll be less rain out there as a whole, but we still have some scattered showers and thunderstorms tonight. A few scattered showers and thunderstorms, but the rain really starts to move back in tomorrow and it is going to be another wet day heading into tomorrow. So today, high temperatures working into the lower 70s, a few scattered showers and those breezy southeast winds. We could see a few stronger thunderstorms, but tomorrow that chance goes up and we keep the rain chances at 80%. We will be dry though come Tuesday. It's going to leave us early Tuesday morning and then notice a big cool down by Friday. Thank you, Melissa. Alabama's most well-known and controversial governor gets a second look in a new book. The story coming up next. Time now, 617 on this Sunday morning. I'm Chief Meteorologist Alan Seals. Get your Pensacola weather one hour earlier weeknights on the CW55 News at 9. Your new choice for news in Pensacola. Danby Factory Outlet Store is now open in Saraland. Shop from hundreds of compact appliances straight from the manufacturer. We're open to the public and offering great deals every day. Shop from a brand you know and trust. Danby Appliances, now open in Saraland off Highway 43, located in the back of Mobile River Industrial Park. Enjoy smoked barbecue and local seafood at Catfish Junction. Or let us cater your next event or host your special occasion in our spacious banquet room. The Catfish Junction, a local favorite. I-65 and exit 13 in Saraland. Celebrating the holidays with the Mobile Symphony is a festive Port City tradition you don't want to miss. The Boston Brass will join us to jazz up your holiday favorites for a swingin' Christmas. Saturday, December 10th and Sunday, December 11th at the Sanger Theater. Mobile Symphony. You've got to hear this. An evening in front of the fire can be so relaxing, but dangerous creosote buildup can cause a chimney fire. Help protect your home with CSL, the creosote sweeping log. It helps clean your chimney while it burns. Inside your chimney walls, there's a constant buildup of flammable tar and creosote. The active minerals in CSL will reduce those dangerous creosote deposits, making your next fire safer. It's so easy. Burn just once every 60 fires. CSL, the creosote sweeping log. CSL is available at Lowe's, Kmart, participating Ace and Walmart. Boot Outlet is the place for boots and clothes in South Mississippi. We're a local business that first opened its doors in 1978 by a third generation boot man and his lovely wife. And we're currently employing the fifth generation. Specializing in work in western boots and apparel, Boot Outlet has the largest selection around from brands you know and trust. Like Papa always said. You can drive New Orleans, you can drive Mobile, we'll still save some money at the Boot Outlet. Boot Outlet, now with three locations on the coast. Ordinary tissues left a coat as nose sore and red. So Dad slayed the problem with Puffs Plus Lotion instead. With lotion to soothe and softness to please, a nose in need deserves Puffs indeed. 
Enjoy smoked barbecue and local seafood at Catfish Junction. Or let us cater your next event or host your special occasion in our spacious banquet room. The Catfish Junction, a local favorite. I-65 and exit 13 in Saraland. Danby Factory Outlet Store is now open in Saraland. Shop from hundreds of compact appliances straight from the manufacturer. We're open to the public and offering great deals every day. Shop from a brand you know and trust. Danby Appliances, now open in Saraland off Highway 43, located in the back of Mobile River Industrial Park. Family Feud, weekdays at 4 on WKRG News 5. Welcome back. Former Alabama Governor George Wallace is the subject of a new book by a local author. It's entitled George Wallace and Enigma. Mary Palmer was at Barnes & Noble on the Eastern Shore Saturday signing copies of her book. The author interviewed Wallace before he died in 1998. It's a biography, and Palmer says readers will learn things they didn't know about the governor. She said, for one, he apologized later in life for his racist views during his political career. I know that nobody's perfect, and while he had his faults, when you do apologize, that's hard to do. And I think it's probably a little bit harder for men and the women. I may get in trouble for saying that, but I think it's easier for women sometimes. And I think that's noble when you can do that, and it shows a true sincerity. Palmer described Wallace as charismatic and said he enjoyed the thrill of running for office. The city of Pritchard celebrated a Christmas tradition yesterday. Hundreds lined the streets for the annual Christmas parade. Marching bands, floats, and cars made their way through Pritchard. People were excited to catch throws, candy, and toys from parade riders. The city's new mayor says the event is a classic part of the holiday. This is a time when the community can come together and share and realize why Christmas even exists. And that's the birth of Jesus Christ. And so that alone placed this community in a position where we can all come together and share in this, this celebration in this time. The cloudy weather didn't deter crowds and the rain held off so the parade could make its way through the city. The holiday spirit could also be felt in Satsuma on Saturday where the third annual reindeer run was held. While real reindeer were missing from the scene, some of the runners showed up to compete in antlers and Christmas sweaters. The 5K and one mile fun run began at Baldwin Square. The organizer of the race was thrilled with the turnout. We've got so many people in the community that are into jogging and racing and that it just took off. So we actually were kind of surprised ourselves at how well it has done and now it's become a great event. The race was sponsored by the Satsuma Community Development Organization. It's held on the first Saturday of December every year. Later in the program, our big names still being considered for Secretary of State. A look at the Trump transition. Time now 622 on this Sunday morning. It's time to shop and buy at Marlin Ingram RV. Find out why everyone shops and buys their RV at Marlin Ingram RV in Montgomery. The best new and used RV brands. Absolute lowest RV prices. Only at Marlin Ingram RV on Troy Highway in Montgomery. Selling or trading your car can sometimes be more of a hassle than it's worth. I'm Wallace Davis with Volunteers of America. We can turn every donated car into a vehicle of hope for people in need. We'll quickly pick up your donated car, boat, RV, or motorcycle, free of charge. Handle all the paperwork, and you can get a great tax deduction. It's really that simple. Call now to see if donating your vehicle makes sense for you. Happy Holidays from Crayola. So, when do I start? Um, shouldn't it be Spokes Crayon? Can somebody turn on the AC? I'm melting here. Chemistry, baby. So I just hold this part and spray. I'm okay. The holidays just got more surprising. You can find these great gifts and more in the Crayola aisle. <laughs> They've sold separately. Visit TobaccoFreeFlorida.com. 
Special buy. Southeastern Salvage just received over 120,000 rolls of designer holiday ribbon. 350 styles in stock. Embroidered, jacquard, beaded, velvet, embossed, plaid, printed, metallic. Currently selling in high-end catalogs for $24 to $39 a roll. Our price, $5 a roll. Two and a half inches by 10 yard and four inches by five yard rolls. Holiday stockings, $5 each. Tree skirts and table toppers, $8 each. Southeastern Salvage Home Emporium, I-65 Mobile. It's time to shop and buy at Marlin Ingram RV. Find out why everyone shops and buys their RV at Marlin Ingram RV in Montgomery. The best new and used RV brands. Absolute lowest RV prices. Only at Marlin Ingram RV on Troy Highway in Montgomery. Now, Melissa Constanzer with First Alert Weather. 625 on a soggy Sunday morning. Look at all the rainfall. We've got colors pretty much across almost our entire map here. Anywhere from light greens to even a few reds. The strongest thunderstorm right now working its way into the Dolphin Island area. So that's why we're going to zoom in here now. No rotation at this time, so don't just worry yet. But we do have a very strong thunderstorm with gusty winds reported of more than 40 miles per hour. This is going to make its way towards the Dolphin Island, Fort Morgan area, and then shift further off towards east towards Weeks Bay, Point Clear. So again, keep in mind, it's moving in, and we got a lot of wet roads out there, including Interstate 65 as you look northbound from Dolphin Street, a wet and soggy view. Today, our temperatures start off in the 50s and 60s. We head up through the lower 70s. Our rain chances actually go down a bit this afternoon. We'll still see a 30 to 40 percent chance of rain, but there could be a few thunderstorms that mix in at times that are stronger. So just keep in mind a wet start to the day, and there's even more rain to come on your seven day forecast. I'll have that in a few more minutes. Thank you, Melissa. Harper Lee's hometown trying to turn the small city into a big tourist attraction. What's on tap for the place that inspired Atticus Finch? Well, more coming up. Time now, 626 on this Sunday morning. The Big Bang Theory, weekdays at 3 on WKRG News 5. Thanks. Big deals for Christmas. Like this queen bed with eight storage drawers, only $7.99. Simmons plush or firm gel foam sets, $4.99. Plus 36 months, no interest. Right now at Hank's Fine Furniture. This is everything. Honey Bunches of Oats. It's all of this, 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 and this. It's the mother of all cereals. It's that, and that, and all of that. It's the most cereal rific cereal in all of history. Yeah, it's that good. Honey Bunches of Oats. This is everything. During the holidays, the best things come in boxes, like the church's holiday bundle. You get eight, yep, you heard that right, eight pieces of our delicious, juicy hand-battered legs and thighs, served up with enough creamy mashed potatoes and fresh coleslaw to share with the whole family, all for just $11.99. Our holiday bundle is the easy way to feed your holiday crowd, a tasty way to ring in the season, and you don't have to wait to open it. For the love of chicken, churches. Is your skin showing? Our skin's job is to protect us. Skin cancer is the most common form of cancer. It is preventable and can be treated if caught early. Dr. Amy Morris and Dr. Dina Howe promote healthy skin habits. Get to know your moles, have them checked by a dermatologist, and remember, wear sunscreen daily. Call the Center for Dermatology for your annual skin cancer screening. The Center for Dermatology, a WKRG Health Connections partner. Hi, I'm David Green with the law firm of Green & Phillips. Our family is excited to join the great toy drive with WKRG. With bicycles being such a big part of Christmas, Green & Phillips is pleased to be the safety sponsor for the toy drive again this year. Our firm will provide helmets for every bike donated so you and your loved ones can have a fun and safe Christmas. From the Green & Phillips family to yours, Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Face to FaceTime beats face on phone time anytime. It's time to say goodbye social media, hello socializing. Time to put down the phone and pick up the conversation. Enjoy a small frappe, latte, mocha, or hot chocolate for two bucks. Make any hour a happy one with sweet McCafe treats all day, only at McDonald's. Here's the staying connected in person. Hank's Big Deals for Christmas. Chenier Rocking Recliners, $1.99. King Size Recliners, $2.99. Leather Leg Power Recliners, $3.99. Right now at Hank's, 
Fine Furniture. Good morning to you, Gulf Coast. Here's a quick look outside. One of our News 5 HD Sky cameras taking a look at a very interesting looking orange beach on this Sunday morning. Watch out for showers and thunderstorms out there as well. I'm Chad Petrie. Thank you so very much for watching. A News 5 crime alert for the Pensacola area and also surrounding areas. Pensacola police need your help in finding a man who shot at a police officer Friday night. The incident happened in the area of Torres Avenue and Tunis Street. Police went looking for the suspect after he approached a woman in a car with a gun. Officer Matthew Mercado found the suspect on 6th Avenue near Tunis Street. The suspect fired one shot at the officer and then ran away. The officer was not injured in that shooting, but if you have any information, you're asked to call the Pensacola Police Department. In political news, sources close to President-elect Donald Trump's transition team say the president is moving away from two frontrunners for Secretary of State, former New York City Mayor Rudy Giuliani and Mitt Romney. Mr. Trump still has to fill more than half his cabinet. Meanwhile, Trump's conversation with Taiwan's president is still a source of controversy. He's the first president or president-elect to speak with a Taiwanese leader since diplomatic relations with the country were cut in 1979. The conversation led China to lodge a diplomatic protest with the United States. Closer to home in Alabama, plans to transform Monroeville into Harper Lee's iconic make home from To Kill a Mockingbird are in the works. News 5's Emily DeVoe confirmed the plans as one of the developers and has this report from Monroeville. The town of Monroeville is already marked by mockingbirds on businesses and snippets of Harper Lee's beloved book. But nearly a year after the author passed away, plans are in the works to turn this small town into a much bigger tourist destination. Fans of To Kill a Mockingbird already make the pilgrimage here to see the old Monroe County Courthouse behind me. But imagine if you could walk inside places like Atticus Finch's house or Boo Radley's place. That's part of the idea behind the trail. What do you want for Christmas? Play-Doh and a baby doll. The attraction will be called the Harper Lee Trail. It will feature a museum and replicas of the book's most iconic houses. And people who live here say they're excited about the possibility. It's a great opportunity for folks to uh, come back to Monroeville and uh, see more things that are uh, available here in this beautiful small town. I think it's absolutely a great idea. The volunteers in Monroeville have worked for so many years, for so long, promoting Monroeville and the Harper Lee novel. And I think it is a great, great idea. So y'all come on to Monroeville. Just like you don't spoil the ending of a good book, they don't have many details to release about the plan just yet, but in a few months, they will. In Monroeville, Emily DeVoe, New Spy. The official plans for the Harper Lee Trail are set to be revealed in March. Taking a look at national headlines for you on this Sunday morning, a fire tearing through a converted warehouse in Oakland, California, left at least nine people dead Friday night. Officials say at least two dozen more are missing in the rubble of the building. The blaze reportedly broke out during a party. People trapped inside the building had a hard time escaping because the only stairway leading to the first floor was made of wooden pallets. The warehouse was illegally converted into artist studios. Oakland officials opened an investigation last month into the warehouse after neighbors filed complaints about people living in the building illegally. In Philadelphia, foam flooded the streets after a transformer blowout. Officials received calls about an explosion at an electrical substation Saturday afternoon. Its fire suppression system then released foam that ended up covering the streets. People living near the area were told to take shelter. About 2,700 customers lost power during the incident as utility crews worked to fix that substation. One building collapsed as emergency crews worked to contain a massive fire that broke out in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Now, officials believe that blaze started in that building before quickly spreading to at least three other buildings. Dozens of homes were evacuated. The blaze also burned several cars parked nearby. Two people were treated for minor injuries. The building where the fire was sparked was under construction. In consumer headlines this morning, if you drive a Ford, you may want to listen up. The car company is recalling more than 680,000 cars because the seat belts can malfunction. The recall affects certain 2014 to 2016 Ford Fusions and 2013 to 2015 Lincoln MKZs. Owners can take their vehicles in for a free repair. Two injuries have been linked to faulty seat belts. 
Good news for car dealerships. Auto sales surged in November. Sales were up nearly 4%. Americans took advantage of Big Black Friday discounts. With one more month to go in the year, the auto industry has a chance to match or exceed last year's sales of more than 17 million vehicles. Chocolate lovers may be riding less of a sugar high after indulging in Nestle chocolate. The candy maker announced it is cutting back the amount of sugar in its chocolate by 40%. They claim this taste will not be affected. Its researchers have discovered that by hollowing out the sugar crystals, sugar can be made sweeter in smaller quantities. Nestle is planning to patent that technology. And Apple stepping up its mapping capabilities by using drones. The drones will give more accurate depictions of locations and will track any construction or road work. The company hopes to beat out Google, which currently leads the mapping industry. Now, Melissa Constanzer with First Alert Weather. 6.35 Sunday morning and we are looking at the chance for some severe weather today. It is a marginal risk, mostly confined to the coast. And then we will actually see that this is actually at the bottom category of our severe weather risk. Yes, uh, Wednesday when we had the severe weather, we were up a notch. So severe weather not overly likely throughout the day and into this morning, but it's still a possibility because there is a lot of rain and even some thunderstorms moving in on the radar. Look at all this moisture coming in. Hey, we need the rain. May as well get it in the early morning hours. And we do have that this morning. We're going to take a closer look at some of the stronger areas of rain and that would be some of the heavy rain working in through parts of Millery and in towards Chatham. This is going to sweep across through Jackson and towards Grove Hill as well as it works its way off to the north and east then uh, McIntosh you're going to be getting some heavy rain as well and even uh, Mount Vernon in there, Citronelle, anywhere on most of our roads including Interstate 65 and I-10 there's a lot of rain coming in but the strongest thunderstorm has been just offshore now passing by the southern part of Dolphin Island. I know you're seeing that little rotation there wondering do we have the possibility of tornadoes there is a possibility but not a very good risk here and i did look at this storm it doesn't seem very likely right now there's not much circulation so i just think this is going to be some straight line gusty winds as it works its way ashore and it's actually moving further east so maybe fort morgan and in towards the weeks bay area and some uh, parts of south of holy i should say seeing some of that rainfall as it moves through in the next few minutes. The southeastern radar showing a wide view, a lot of rain, and that's continuing to stream not only in through the Tennessee River Valley, but also all the way back to Texas. There's more rain on the way through the week. In fact, we could get a few inches, not just today, but actually in through Monday as well, tomorrow. So that's good to help us because we are still below average for the 2016 rainfall and still in a drought across our area. Our Alpha Insurance camera showing, hey, if you're feeling a little down this morning, yeah, it's a little dreary Sunday morning, but hey, it is Sunday. At least it's a nice day, and we are seeing that sunrise actually off in the distance from Orange Beach right now. They're dry for now, but again, they will be getting the rain. The clouds turning all sorts of colors as temperatures start in the 70s in Orange Beach. That's a little warm. Most of us are in the 50s and 60s. The winds all over the place, but largely out of the east and will become southeast today. They will be a bit breezy and that's going to keep some very rough seas. So not a good day to go out in the water. And as I mentioned, 70 in Gulf Shores, that's warmer than most of us. 56 in Mobile, it's 51 in Leakesville, 63 in Pascagoula. And those numbers all on the rise today. Right now, again, the southeast starting off pretty mild along the coast where you have the moisture. As you work your way inland, it's in the mid 40s, which isn't all that bad to start off a December morning for parts of northern Alabama and Georgia. But as we go through today, we top out somewhere in the mid 60s. But it comes with rain, mostly the showers through the morning, then very scattered, a little bit less widespread through this afternoon and evening, but still a risk for some thunderstorms. Even overnight, kind of quiet to start off with, but more moisture works in for tomorrow. And look at this, very soggy as we go through your Monday forecast, and that could even have some strong or severe thunderstorms. So today, highs back into the lower 70s. We do have those scattered showers, an 80% chance of rain today, and that continues into tomorrow. But keep in mind, the afternoon, evening, not as wet as probably the morning hours today. And then tomorrow morning, we'll pick up with that rain chance. Some of those stronger or even severe thunderstorms are possible or more likely tomorrow with highs hanging out near 70 degrees. Thank you, Melissa. And of course, I picked uh, this toy for a reason, building blocks, because 
you know, here at the Great Toy Drive, we build, constantly building on last year's total. We're looking to get 30,000 toys, and we're off to a pretty good number right now, but we need your help. This is a big shopping weekend, and if you're out there buying this weekend, pick up an extra something for the Great Toy Drive. We would so appreciate it. Or maybe get together with your Bible study group, get together with some office co-workers. We get a lot of help from teams and social organizations that help us out. And also, our great partners of the Great Toy Drive as well, the Salvation Army, Toys for Tots, Air Specialty, Baldwin EMC, Bugmaster, Wind Creek Casino and Hotel Atmore, Zaxby's, and of course, Mix 99.9. Thank you very much. Coming up, a look at the Jags win, clinching a bowl position. We'll have more on that coming up. Family Feud, weekdays at 4 on WKRG News 5. Enjoy smoked barbecue and local seafood at Catfish Junction. Or let us cater your next event or host your special occasion in our spacious banquet room. The Catfish Junction, a local favorite. I-65 and exit 13 in Saraland. They say good things come in small packages, and Midtown Pharmacy is a perfect example. For over 30 years, Midtown Pharmacy has been serving the people of Mobile. Locally owned and operated, we take service to another level. No long waits, prompt answers to questions, and always service with a smile. And check out our new app where you can order refills with the touch of a button. Go to Pharmacy Health Connect and download the app. Then set it to Midtown Pharmacy Mobile. Midtown Pharmacy, locally owned and locally loved. 2152 Airport Boulevard near the Loop. At Farmers, we've seen almost everything, so we know how to cover almost anything, even a rodent ride along. All right, buddy, don't forget anything. I won't, Dad. Good morning, Captain Rod here. It's pretty hairy out on the interstate. Traffic is literally crawling, but there is some movement on the east side over <laughs> Getting word of another collision. <laughs> it happened December 14th, 2015, and we covered it. Talk to farmers. We know a thing or two because we've seen a thing or two. We are farmers. Bum, 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 bum. Well, hello there, gorgeous. You, my friend, are no salad. A burger smothered in A1 butter topped with sizzling steak and crispy onions for just a buck ninety-nine? That's high fashion flavor at a thrift store price. The A1 buttery steak burger. Steak Swiss and A1 butter for just a buck ninety-nine. Checkers and rallies. Fast foodies know the deal. After a car wreck, demand Richard Mather. If you've been injured in a car accident, you need your lawyer to be two things. Someone you can talk to about your accident. And someone who will fight the insurance company to get the money you deserve. Nice to you and tough on them. So give me a call today and we'll get started today. If you've been injured in a car wreck, demand Richard Mather. The consultation is free, so call 432-2580. are both soft and strong, which is why our products are too. Angel Soft. Enjoy smoked barbecue and local seafood at Catfish Junction, or let us cater your next event or host your special occasion in our spacious banquet room. The Catfish Junction, a local favorite. I-65 and exit 13 in Saraland. Morning to you, Gulf Coast. Here's a quick look outside. One of our News 5 HD cameras taking a look at the wet Sunday morning out there in Mobile. A lot of heavy rain out there. You might be hearing it on your roof as we speak. And when you think of rain, you also think of mold. And living in the south, we know mold can be a problem year-round. We continue our look at Danny Lipford's top 50 home improvement tips in this hour. How to tackle mold. In order to get rid of mold and mildew on the outside of your home, you have to kill it and remove the spores. On non-porous surfaces like vinyl siding, a solution of bleach, detergent, and water will work. On porous wood or masonry, you'll need an antimicrobial cleaning product. Once the cleaner has a few minutes to work, begin cleaning with a scrub brush or pressure washer. When cleaning, work horizontally from bottom to top in small sections, then reverse that to rinse from top to bottom. 
Today's homeowner airs later today in its entirety at 1030 this morning on our sister station, the CW 55. They're also looking for home improvement projects to share on air. So if you've got a good one coming up, you can contact them at todayshomeowner.com slash locations. And coming up in our next hour, Danny talks about finding the right HVAC filter for your home. Now, News 5 Sports. In sports, the final pairings for the four-team college football playoffs will be announced today, and you can count on Alabama to take a spot. The defending national champions won the Southeastern Conference for the third straight year yesterday. The tide rolled over the Florida Gators 54-16 in the Georgia Dome. Florida took an early 7-0 lead. Alabama's offense started slow, finishing the first quarter with minus 7 yards. But a pair of interceptions and a blocked punt for a touchdown gave the tide a 16-9 lead going into the second quarter quarter. Alabama held the Gators offense in the third and took the ball 98 yards down the field to make the score 40 to 16. Two more late touchdowns sealed the Tides victory. I'm so very proud of our team for first of all having an undefeated season but secondly for winning the SEC championship. I think to do that three years in a row is a really significant accomplishment especially uh, these guys who have been challenged all year long uh, by playoff game after playoff game, but this was the first championship game we had, and uh, they certainly responded well. Alabama scored the second most points in SEC championship game history. The Tide is the only SEC team with fewer than four losses on the season. The South Alabama Jaguars season isn't over yet. The Jags beat New Mexico State 35-28 to Saturday, making them Bowl eligible. The Jags scored 21 points in the fourth quarter to clinch the win. Xavier Johnson rushed for 154 yards and three touchdowns. Quarterback Dallas Davis threw for 239 yards. Head coach Joey Jones was proud of his team's efforts and their determination to finish. Being able to go to a bowl is a special thing. We told them that, and uh, you know they're going to experience that. And, and I'm so proud of those guys. So proud of those seniors that get to experience a bowl. Uh, for the second time in three years. We didn't fold under pressure. We got behind 21-14. We won the fourth quarter, and that's what, that's what we've been all about all year. The Jaguars finished the regular season 6-6. Six and six. New Mexico State fell to 3-9 and nine on their season. Number three, Clemson narrowly defeated number 19, Virginia Tech, in the Atlantic Coast Conference Championship game. 42-35 Saturday night, Clemson's quarterback, Deshaun Watson, increased his chances of winning the Heisman Trophy by passing for three touchdowns and running for two more. The team will likely find themselves in the college football playoffs and will look to redeem themselves after last year's loss to Alabama in the national championship game. Clemson will wait for official word on the college football playoffs today. The national semifinals begin on New Year's Eve. In the biggest comeback in the Big Ten title game history, number eight Penn State beats number six Wisconsin 38-31. Penn State rallied from a 21-point first-half deficit to claim its first title in eight years. Trace McSorley threw for four touchdown passes to help clinch the win. He finished 22 of 31 for 384 yards. Now the team will anxiously wait to see if the selection committee rewards them with a playoff slot today. The South Alabama basketball team hosts Middle Tennessee Saturday. The Jags were coming off a big road win against Southern Mississippi Wednesday. However, the Blue Raiders built a 17-point lead in the first half and held on to win 67-55. Ken Williams and Don McKelly led the Jags with 12 points each. This is South Alabama's second loss of the season. In the NFL, the Miami Dolphins will take on the Baltimore Ravens at noon today right here on CBS. The Miami Dolphins beat the Ravens last year and have won their last six games. The Ravens are coming off a win against Cincinnati, and you can watch that game again right here on News 5. Now, Melissa Constanzer with First Alert Weather. A lot of rain to start off your Sunday morning. It is 648, and you are seeing some moderate to even heavy rainfall in some locations coming in basically out of the Gulf and in parts of Louisiana. So let's take a closer look at the strongest thunderstorm that we have out there, which has just been skirting basically east offshore of Dolphin Island and now getting into the Fort Morgan area. It's actually had a little bit of indication for rotation just off of Dolphin Island, a little bit further south of that. And we are monitoring that. There you can see that 
indication of uh, rotation there. It's pretty weak at this time, so I don't think it's a concern for a tornado, but we could see a water spout if it gets closer to uh, Gulf Shores area as it works its way east. Of course, this is showing the winds here and which directions are going with those greens and reds. But otherwise, it's just a soggy morning for most of us. Really a lot of scattered showers out there, which means the Bay Way awfully wet as we look live from Daphne. Today's forecast... We keep the rain out there this morning. 80% chance of rain this morning. It'll start to taper down as we go into the afternoon and the evening, but we don't ever get completely dry. In fact, we will be very wet into tomorrow. I'll have more details on that full forecast in our next half hour. Thank you, Melissa. It is Faith Time, our weekly conversation on matters of faith. Joining us this morning is Blake Newsom, the senior pastor at Dolphin Way Baptist Church. Good morning to you, sir. Good morning, Chad. Thanks for having me. We are entering the second week of Advent. A lot of churches will be observing that this morning. Uh, it's a big season. Arguably, Christmas is one of the most important holidays on the Christian calendar. Yeah. Uh, tell us why the holiday really is observed in the first place. Yeah. Well, I would say that Christmas is probably the second most important, particularly in our faith tradition of Christianity, uh, because it is a time where we celebrate uh, as Advent says, the arrival, the coming of Jesus. Uh, and for us in the Christian faith tradition, in a sense, when we talk about Advent, we are uh, borrowing uh, or we're certainly building on the, the heritage uh, that was handed to us from, uh, from the Jewish uh, believers, Jewish uh, people. Uh, who were waiting for the Messiah. They were hoping for this expected king who was to come. Uh, and as they were waiting, they longed for his arrival. And as Christians, we believe that uh, this king has come. We believe that his name is Jesus uh, and that he has come to set his people free, that he's come to give hope and peace, that he's come to give joy. Uh, and so we celebrate that uh, arrival and we celebrate his coming. And if you look at the Old Testament, a lot of the latter chapters of the Old Testament featured prophets trying yeah. to set the uh, Jewish people on the right path through different turmoils. And then there's, there's 400 years of, of silence from yeah. God essentially for uh, after kings. How revolutionary was the gospel when uh, folks like John and Matthew started preaching it? Oh, it was incredible. I mean, you think about uh, this, this nation, this group of people had been longing for God's intervention. And then they had been dominated and subjugated by several other nations. So here they were floundering. They were an oppressed people. They were longing for God to move in their lives, but they weren't even hearing from God for 400 years. And then bursting on the scene is this crazy looking prophet uh, in John the Baptist who proclaims uh, that salvation is coming. Uh, that the Lamb of God is coming to take away the sins of the world. And then Jesus comes on the scene following John the Baptist. And he's proclaiming himself as the long-awaited one, the long-expected one who brings hope and peace. It was absolutely revolutionary. And when we talk about Christmas, it's also an important holiday in a secular sense. It's almost been co-opted in a lot of yeah. ways by secular interests. How do you try and keep the, you know, the reason for the season in your message and try to float above that secular fray? Yeah. You know, it's interesting about Christmas, even in secular songs, we talk about it being the most wonderful time of the year. And I believe that, that underneath even the secular uh, approach to Christmas, there is this longing for hope. Uh, we ha there's a, people are nicer at Christmas. Uh, we're all sort of bound together in this commonality of looking for joy, of looking for peace. Uh, and what Christmas offers to us, the message of Christmas, is hope. And I think that resonates with anyone and everyone. Everyone is looking for hope. And that's what Christmas is all about. And one thing we wanted to plug before we uh, wrap up here is one amazing night that'll be at your church coming up next Sunday, December 11th at 5 o'clock. Blake Newsom with Dauphin Way Baptist Church. Thank you so very much for joining us on this edition of Faith Time and News 5 this morning. We'll continue after the break. Thanks. Faith Time is brought to you by Volunteers of America Southeast. Good morning. A king offered a prize to the artist who could paint the best picture of peace. There were two he liked. The first, a calm lake with peaceful towering mountains all around and a blue sky with white clouds. The other, rugged, bare mountains, a dark sky filled with rain and a waterfall tumbling down the mountain. But behind the waterfall, there was a tiny brush tree 
with a mother bird sitting in her nest in perfect peace. The king chose the second picture and said, Peace means to be in the midst of difficult things and still be calm in your heart. I'm Wallace Davis. There are no limits to carry. Christmas nights of lights, the Hank is merry and bright. Mobile's largest light display is an unbelievable sight. The Hank has been transformed for the holidays. Drive through and marvel in awe at over one million lights as they twinkle in time to your favorite holiday classics. Make Christmas nights of lights at the Hank your family tradition. Shows start at 5.30 p.m. each night. Rain or shine at Hank Aaron Stadium. Now through January 1st. Visit ChristmasNightsOfLights.com. You get yourself there. Let the UPS store worry about the gifts. Come in today and ask our certified packing experts about our pack and ship guarantee. In America, there are 123,000 people waiting for an organ transplant. Nearly 3,500 are waiting in Alabama. Now that's why I'm proud to be an organ donor. 70% of Alabamians needing a kidney transplant are African American. That's why I'm proud to be an organ donor. One donor can heal or save the lives of over 50 people. And that's why I'm proud to be an organ donor. Please be an organ donor and give someone a second chance at life. I'm Peter Albrecht. Get your Pensacola news one hour earlier weeknights on the CW55 News at 9. Your new choice for news in Pensacola. Now, Melissa Constanzer with First Alert Weather. A lot of rain moving into our area this morning, so make sure you're staying aware of what's going on. It's moderate to heavy rainfall streaming just up the Interstate 65 corridor. It's also moving east as it does that. We want to take a look at the strongest rainfall out there, and that has been just offshore of Dolphin Island. So we will keep an eye on this thunderstorm, but there's also, again, a lot of heavy rainfall out there. Your extended outlook. The next few days here, it's going to be wet. Wet this morning, maybe a little less wet this afternoon, but we still have scattered showers and thunderstorms throughout the day. Tomorrow, more thunderstorms. Our severe weather risk goes up, and we'll have more details in the full hour ahead on News 5 this morning. Anyone with type 2 diabetes knows how it feels to see your numbers go up, despite your best efforts. But what if you could turn things around? What if you could love your numbers? Discover Once Daily Invokana. It's the number one prescribed SGLT2 inhibitor that works to lower A1C. A pill taken just once in the morning, Invokana is used along with diet and exercise to significantly lower blood sugar in adults with type 2 diabetes. In fact, it's been proven to be more effective at lowering A1C than Genuvia. Invokana works around the clock by reducing the amount of sugar allowed back into the body and sending some sugar out through the process of urination. And while it's not for lowering systolic blood pressure or weight loss, it may help you with both. Invokana can cause important side effects, including dehydration, which may cause you to feel dizzy, faint, lightheaded, or weak upon standing. Other side effects may include kidney problems, genital yeast infections, changes in urination, high potassium, increases in cholesterol, risk of bone fracture, or urinary tract infections possibly serious. Serious side effects may include ketoacidosis, which can be life-threatening. Stop taking and call your doctor right away if you experience symptoms, or if you experience symptoms of allergic reaction such as rash, swelling, or difficulty breathing or swallowing. Do not take Invokana if you have severe liver or kidney problems or are on dialysis. Tell your doctor about any medical conditions and medications you take. Using Invokana with the sulfonylurea or insulin may cause low blood sugar. It's time to turn things around. Lower your blood sugar with Invokana. Imagine loving your numbers. There's only one Invokana. Ask your doctor about it by name. 
Like black and white TV to color TV, things change. But at Mobile Shoe Hospital, the right things never change. Like the feel of a good boot, or the personal service, or the big selection. Western boots have always been here, but look at them now. Work boots have always been here, but look at them now. Repairs and perfect fit haven't changed. Mobile Shoe Hospital still offers them. After all, why change a good thing? Mobile Shoe Hospital, 7210 Airport Boulevard. A lot of websites offer quick loans, but be careful, they're not all the same. SpeedyCash.com is a state-licensed direct lender you can trust for cash loans at the best rates. And with SpeedyCash.com, getting your cash is safe, quick, and easy. Often the money is in your account the same day. With years of experience, 300 stores, and a kangaroo as a mascot, SpeedyCash is the online cash loan company you can trust. <laughs> When you need cash fast, go to speedycash.com. Love that speedy cash. Now, WKRG News 5. The Gators give it a try, but come up toothless against the tide. Next stop for Alabama is, of course, the College Football Championship Series for the third year in a row. Big changes coming to Fort Condi. New attractions come with a cost to you. A soggy Sunday morning, lots of rain lighting up our radar. All the forecasts coming up. From WKRG News 5, the Gulf Coast News Leader, the news starts now. Good morning. Thanks for getting up with News 5 this morning, Sunday. I'm Chad Petrie. I don't know who's watching, but I'm glad you are. First on five, nearly 75,000 people flooded the Georgia Dome Saturday to watch the University of Alabama roll over the University of Florida in the 2016 SEC Championship football game. Final score, Alabama 54, Florida 16. News 5's Haley Minogue was on the sideline and spoke with Alabama players after the big win. In a crazy but not necessarily shocking game, the University of Alabama defeated the University of Florida for the SEC Championship. Florida may have drawn the first blood, but after that, it was mistake and another mistake and things quickly got chippy. Alabama put up 33 points in the first half, the most points ever scored in a first half in championship history. Man, I'm just excited that my boys came out here to play, bro. We just came out here and handled business like we supposed to do. Florida quarterback Austin Appleby had 261 yards and two touchdowns, but also threw three interceptions. You know, our guys fought. We got a lot of guys out. A lot of guys had to step in and step up. And all in all, I'm really proud of the way we fought. Damian Harris rushed for 86 yards. Man, it's a great feeling. Getting a, getting a chair a moment like that with these guys, man, it's just it's incredible. Getting to do it in front of all these great fans for the third year in a row. I mean, I don't, I don't really know how to put it into words yet. They'll celebrate now, but they're already focusing on the future. It's all about what we do. We're not worried about what other teams do, where we fall in the playoffs. We're just worried about what we do, how we practice and prepare for it, and just getting ready to play another game. Reporting in the Georgia Dome, I'm Haley Minogue, News 5. And of course, today is a big day in college football. Even though it's Sunday, teams will find out which bowl games they'll be headed to this afternoon. ESPN will announce who Alabama will play in the championship playoffs at around 11.30 this morning. And if you want to grab some new Alabama SEC Championship gear, Academy Sports, that's one place you could go. They're carrying that merch. They were open late last night for fans wanting to be the first people to buy the newly released hats, t-shirts, and other items. We've got a News 5 crime alert this morning in Pensacola and the surrounding area. Pensacola police are looking for a man who shot at an officer and then ran away Friday night. The incident happening in the area of Torres Avenue and Tunis Street. Police went looking for the suspect after he walked up to a woman in a car with a gun. Officer Matthew Mercado found the suspect on 6th Avenue near Tunis Street. The suspect fired one shot at the officer and then ran. The officer wasn't hurt in the shooting, but anyone with information about the crime is asked to contact the Pensacola Police Department. In political news, President-elect Donald Trump's conversation with Taiwan's President Friday still causing controversy. Trump is the first president or president-elect to speak with a Taiwanese leader since diplomatic relations with the country were cut in 1979 by the Carter administration. So that conversation led to China lodging a diplomatic protest with the U.S. 
Meanwhile, Mr. Trump still needs to pick half his cabinet, including his nominee for Secretary of State. Sources close to his transition team say the president-elect is moving away from two frontrunners, former New York City Mayor Rudy Giuliani and former Massachusetts Governor Mitt Romney. Mr. Trump also tweeted this weekend vowing to keep jobs in the U.S. after finding out an Indiana manufacturer is moving its operations to Mexico. Jill Stein is giving up her bid for an election recount in Pennsylvania. The Green Party presidential candidate made the announcement Saturday night. She said voters who joined her petition could not pay a million-dollar bond that a state court requested Friday. Stein also pushed for recounts in Wisconsin and Michigan after reports of possible hacking surfaced. However, there has been no credible evidence of election tampering. Stein plans to make a major announcement about the recounts outside Trump Tower in New York City Monday. Tourism volunteers are getting ready for a big move. The city of Mobile recently announced they were moving the city's welcome center from Fort Condé to the History Museum. Volunteers say they were sad to leave the fort. The welcome center will not reopen until December 12th. We're closing our visitor center for 13 days in order to make a change seems to me to be kind of a lack of adequate planning. We've had time to do that, and I'm very concerned that our Merchants, our restauranteurs, our hoteliers have all been affected by having the visitor center closed for 13 days. Discussions about moving the center began last January at the time officials talked about a new location with better parking and easier interstate access, but this move doesn't address either of those concerns. And Fort Condi will no longer be a free tourist attraction. It's still free now, but the city of Mobile recently announced activation management would begin running the fort. And starting next year, you'll have to pay admission sometime next year. Manager Scott Tindall estimates admission prices will be around $7 for adults, $5 for children. Now, this isn't the first time visitors have had to pay. The city charged admission from 1976 to 1983. And if you're planning to cross the bay today, we have a traffic alert to tell you about. The Bankhead Tunnel will be closed until about 5 tomorrow morning. This is a live look at the tunnel right now. Alternate routes, of course, include the Wallace Tunnel and the Africatown Bridge. The closure will allow Alabama Power to continue conducting routine maintenance on the tunnel. Now, Melissa Constanzer with First Alert Weather. 7.06 right now, and Melissa, I walked into the Toy Center a few minutes ago, and you could just hear the rain pummeling the roof. You can probably hear it on your roof, too, maybe, and if not, you probably want to wait a little bit. Yeah, it's, it's coming across the entire area, so everyone getting the chance for rain this morning. Yeah, it's going to be a wet one. That's but all I can say. What about severe weather? What are the odds of that? Uh, there's some chance of severe weather, and we're monitoring that right now. In fact, we're going to go to the radar right now because that's where we're watching for that possibility of severe weather. Lots of green on the radar and even yellows and reds, which indicates heavier rainfall. So we have moderate to heavy rainfall across most of the area. The Florida Panhandle still missing out on some of that rain, but don't worry, it's moving to the east as you can see there. Now, I want to take you into a closer look of the strongest thunderstorm that we've really seen out there, and that is this one just off the coastline of Dolphin Island. This is going to continue to track to the east, kind of skirting along the coastline here. This is the only one that's had cloud to ground lightning, and it's also the only one right now that we are monitoring for a little bit of rotation. So there very well could be a water spout with this. Now, the question is, is the possibility of tornado not overly likely here, but there is a little bit of green, which is winds going in towards the radar, and reds, winds going away from the radar that's located at the Mobile Regional Airport. So all things we're watching this morning, and as you look from Dolphin Island, you know it's storming out there. Lots of rain right now. I haven't seen a lot of lightning, though, on that camera. It's also pretty soggy as we look from our Alpha Insurance camera. One thing, though, with the rain, not all that chilly. 59 degrees in Mobile. It's 71 in Gulf Shores, 60s along the coast, and 50s inland. That's where we start off the day, and we start off with a lot of rain. Those rain chances go down later on this afternoon, but we still have the chance of scattered showers and thunderstorms. And there's another threat of severe weather tomorrow that's even higher. I'll bet forecast in a few minutes. Thank you, Melissa. Christmas parades happened all over the place yesterday. We'll have a look at the Dolphin Island Parade coming up after the break. Time now 708 on this Sunday morning. Mornings matter so much, we're doing more of it. We're starting at 4.30 to give you 30 minutes more local news. A full half hour earlier just to get you going. Here. Gee, thanks. 
you'll get more news of the day. There are five things you need to know before you head out the door this morning. More live reports. Eye-catching wrecks on the Bayway. In and more weather so you'll be prepared. The hour-by-hour -hour forecast has absolutely no rain today. So more news. More weather. More of what you need because mornings matter. Enjoy smoked barbecue and local seafood at Catfish Junction. Or let us cater your next event or host your special occasion in our spacious banquet room. The Catfish Junction, a local favorite. I-65 and exit 13 in Saraland. They say good things come in small packages, and Midtown Pharmacy is a perfect example. For over 30 years, Midtown Pharmacy has been serving the people of Mobile. Locally owned and operated, we take service to another level. No long waits, prompt answers to questions, and always service with a smile. And check out our new app where you can order refills with the touch of a button. Go to Pharmacy Health Connect and download the app. Then set it to Midtown Pharmacy Mobile. Midtown Pharmacy, locally owned and locally loved. 2152 Airport Boulevard near the Loop. Someone once asked, do we ever think about anything other than steak? Yes. And no. You can't fake steak. Longhorn Steakhouse. Tonight's special, turf and surf. Flo's filet and lobster tail. Our new crab cake filet. And our new renegade sirloin and lobster mac and cheese. Only at Longhorn Steakhouse. The Great Toy Drive is underway. Drop off your donations at any one of these wonderful sponsors. Let's make a difference in a child's life together. Coach, it's all about you. Truckloads of new 2017 Subarus have arrived at Kobe Subaru for the Subaru Share the Love event. Lease a 2016 Subaru Crosstrek for $229 a month, and Subaru will donate $250 to your choice of five different charities, including Feeding the Gulf Coast. At Kobe, it's all about you. It's all about you, you, you. Complimentary maintenance included. Enjoy smoked barbecue and local seafood at Catfish Junction. Or let us cater your next event or host your special occasion in our spacious banquet room. The Catfish Junction, a local favorite. I-65 and exit 13 in Saraland. Good morning to you, Gulf Coast. Here's a quick look outside. One of our News 5 HD cameras taking a look at gray skies over the Bay Way and there are showers and thunderstorms out there. We just heard some thunder over here at the studios at our location on 555 Broadcast Drive. So yes, it is wet, it is rainy, and a little chilly out there as well. And you know what I just realized? What's that? I forgot my rain boots today. I really needed those too. Oh Please. no, <laughs> that means no walking in the rain, no singing in the rain either. Yeah, and I was gonna go get something for the toy drive too, so I'm just gonna have to have wet feet. Uh, get, get the rain boots and the rain gear, but thankfully, it didn't come through yesterday morning when so many Christmas events were kicking off. This is just one of them that I got to partake in. It was the Christmas parade of Dolphin Island. That was my view from on top of the Red Corvette as the Grand Marshal. I was so honored to be the Grand Marshal, and it was a lot of fun. Um, anytime I get to spend the day on Dolphin Island is so much fun. But we had the Abba Schreiers there, as well as the Azalea Trail Maids. They were there, and all the... Little Miss Dolphin Island, Junior Miss Dolphin Island, Miss Dolphin Island, the list went on and on um, there, but it was so fun. And, and you know what? Santa Claus even made a, an appearance. It's very cool. And it was gray skies for most of the day yesterday. How are the crowds out there on Dolphin Island? You know, that didn't seem to hinder it. There were a lot of people there ready to take uh, beads and moon pies. I should mention, most people, though, of course, with the Saturday in the South, supporting uh, Alabama. We saw a lot of Alabama fans, Auburn fans. I saw Big Ten fans, including some Penn State fans. So it was a very, very fun day. I may have given one Penn State fan an extra moon pie. Yes, kudos to the uh, <laughs> Nittany Lions over there for you there, Melissa. So you don't get to see a meteorologist at a parade very often, mm -hmm. and you don't get to see an otter on a kayak either. This is a weird one out of California, out of Watsonville, California. John Coaster and his wife were kayaking when that fella just hopped on their kayak rental. Oh, he's so cute. I wish, can you like pet him? I think they're a little oily, but nonetheless, uh, yeah, sometimes you need to apparently uh, push him off a little bit, and that's what the rental place actually told the guy who rented the kayak, you know, and this could happen, and you'll need to use your paddle to kind of gently push it off. You know, almost suggests to me that this is one of those otters that was slowly getting domesticated. Maybe people were feeding it. Maybe it was so comfortable around humans that it wasn't afraid to get up on a giant kayak. Yeah, certainly a possibility, but who knows? Maybe it was just having some fun and wanting a free ride. 
for a little bit. Who doesn't just, want a free, free yeah. ride, especially, especially when you've got... Especially when you're sunning like that, you know? I know. It's a beautiful <laughs> day out there in California, but very rainy oh, yeah. out here today. And do we expect the rain to be with us all day? You know, it's going to be with us most heavily through the morning. It'll back off a little through the day, but we're not going to be completely dry anytime today or even tomorrow. So let's take a look at that radar. This is where really basically the heaviest rainfall is moving in at this time. And you can see as this band comes through, it's really a large band extending all the way up the Interstate 65 corridor. Everybody getting rain, except for parts of the Florida Panhandle right now, Pensacola, Okaloosa County. You have not seen the rain yet, but it is moving off towards the east, so you will get it. Don't worry. Uh, there's some heavy rainfall this morning out there, which means wet roads. I want to zoom into the strongest thunderstorm that we have as we take a look at this radar, which is basically down just off of the Dolphin Island, Fort Morgan area, and we do have a very strong thunderstorm here with even some cloud to ground lightning of course moderate to heavy rainfall this has been moving to the east at a good clip anywhere around 20 25 miles per hour but it is also maybe producing a water spout there is some very weak indication of rotation here greens meaning winds going towards the radar in mobile and reds meaning the wind going away so you can notice that could mean a spin up there in that area so we'll keep watching it but right now that threat not a big deal but just keep in mind there may be a water spout so take this one seriously and keep in mind some very strong storms right along the coastline rain stretching across the southeast. This is actually a good thing to see. It goes all the way back into Texas and hey, we need the rain. Dolphin Island getting it. This is that stronger thunderstorm that you're seeing as you look to the south and east and uh, a lot of rain. Good thing that parade was yesterday. <laughs> Our Alpha Insurance camera as you look from Daphne across the Mobile Bayway, a wet to go on Interstate 10 and any of the roads that you have out there this morning. Rainfall Again, we need it 5 to 10 inches below average across the air. We are still in a drought, and I think we'll probably pick up an inch or so today, and we'll even pick up some more later in the week. But with that inch, we could see some severe weather. The threat, very small here, right along the coastline, I think mainly as that main band's coming in. So just keep in mind, it's probably going to be some damaging winds if we see anything at all, possibly an isolated tornado, but really mostly a water spout risk. So don't stress too much, but that is, there is a small chance of severe weather today. So it is going to be staying pretty minimal. Today's highs in the 70s, some scattered showers out there, and that southeast wind coming in a little breezy. That's keeping seas rough sees around three to five feet and a high risk for rip currents. It tapers off a little this afternoon and overnight, but we come back with a lot of rain tomorrow, another 80% chance of scattered showers and thunderstorms, and that risk for severe weather goes up tomorrow as well. Notice we're in the 70s, but by the end of the week, another cool shot of air moves in, and we're back to the 40s for highs. Thank you, Melissa. Alabama's most well-known and controversial governor gets a second look in a new book. We'll have that story coming up next. Time now, 717 on this Sunday morning. The Vascular Center presents the new you. No more varicose veins. Call the Vascular Center today, 445-0075, or visit mobilevascular.com. Stand back, you hear? Break out the syrup, because Denny's new fluffier, tastier, better Rudolph pancakes are here for the holidays. After your car accident, don't accept a small check from the insurance company. Many times their offers are not even enough to cover all your medical bills, lost wages, and pain and suffering. The lawyers at Green and Phillips make insurance companies play fair. And if they don't play fair, we'll fight them in court. If you're injured in a car wreck, call or come by Green and Phillips today. You never need an appointment. Call 1-888-510-1020 right now. Toyota Thon is on at Palmer's Toyota Superstore. Get Toyota Thon pricing on over a thousand new Toyotas. Now is your best time to buy. At Palmer's Toyota, drive the all-new redesigned 2017 Corolla for $118 a month. $118 a month for Corollas. Drive new 2017 Camrys for $161 a month. $161 a month for Camrys. Toyota Thon is on at the all-new Palmer's Toyota Superstore, the family store. You gotta see this place. At Farmers, we've seen almost everything, so we know how to cover almost anything, even a rodent ride-along. All right, buddy. Don't forget anything. I won't, Dad. 
morning, Captain Rod here. It's pretty hairy out on the interstate. Traffic is literally crawling. But there is some movement on the east side over <laughs> Getting word of another collision. It happened December 14th, 2015. And we covered it. Talk to farmers. We know a thing or two because we've seen a thing or two. We are farmers. Bum, 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 bum. These are our sons and daughters. They're curious, fearless, and relentlessly pursuing what's next. Because they are what's next. Invest in your child with College Counts, Alabama's college savings fund. Visit collegecounts529.com to get your enrollment kit and to learn about investment objectives, risks, and costs for Alabama residents. Time to cheer up the holidays? Ch -ch -ch Chia. Chia Pets, the gift that grows. Featuring your new Chia Pets, the trolls. Just spread the seeds. Water. And watch it grow. Ch -ch -ch Chia. Bring a smile to Grandma's face. With Chia emojis. Or for that special someone. With a Chia Heart Eyes emoji. Aww. Ch -ch -ch Chia. There's a Chia Pet for everyone in the family. Chia Pets. The gift that grows. Available at Walgreens, Rite Aid, CVS, and Walmart. Makes a great gift. The Big Bang Theory, weekdays at 3 on WKRG News 5. Welcome back to News 5 this morning, Sunday. The city of Pritchard celebrated a Christmas tradition yesterday. Hundreds lying in the streets for the annual Christmas parade. Marching bands, floats, and cars made their way through Pritchard. People were excited to catch throws, candy, and toys from parade riders. And the city's new mayor says the event is a classic part of the holiday. This is a time when the community can come together and share and realize why Christmas even exists. And that's the birth of Jesus Christ. And so that alone placed this community in a position where we can all come together and share in this, this celebration in this time. The cloudy weather didn't deter crowds either. Rain holding off so the parade could make its way through the city dry. The holiday spirit also being felt in Satsuma on Saturday where the third annual reindeer run was held. While real reindeer were missing from the scene, some of the runners showed up to compete in antlers and Christmas sweaters. The 5K and one mile fun run began at Baldwin Square and the organizer of the race was really thrilled with the turnout. We've got so many people in the community that are into jogging and racing and it, it just took off. So we actually were kind of surprised ourselves at how well it has done and now it's become a great event. The race was sponsored by the Satsuma Community Development Organization. It's held on the first Saturday of December every year. Later in the program, big names still being considered for the Secretary of State. Maybe a look at the Trump transition. Time now, 721 on this Sunday morning. Time to vote for your favorite Mo on WKRG's Facebook page. Anyone with type 2 diabetes knows how it feels to see your numbers go up, despite your best efforts. But what if you could turn things around? What if you could love your numbers? Discover Once Daily Invokana. It's the number one prescribed SGLT2 inhibitor that works to lower A1C. A pill taken just once in the morning, Invokana is used along with diet and exercise to significantly lower blood sugar in adults with type 2 diabetes. In fact, it's been proven to be more effective at lowering A1C than Genuvia. Invokana works around the clock by reducing the amount of sugar allowed back into the body and sending some sugar out through the process of urination. And while it's not for lowering systolic blood pressure or weight loss, it may help you with both. Invokana can cause important side effects, including dehydration, which may cause you to feel dizzy, faint, lightheaded, or weak upon standing. Other side effects may include kidney problems, genital yeast infections, changes in urination, high potassium, increases in cholesterol, risk of bone fracture, or urinary tract infections possibly serious. Serious side effects may include ketoacidosis, which can be life-threatening. Stop taking and call your doctor right away if you experience symptoms or if you experience symptoms of allergic reaction such as rash, swelling, or difficulty breathing or swallowing. Do not take Invokana if you have severe liver or kidney problems or are on dialysis. Tell your doctor about any medical conditions and medications you take. Using Invokana with the sulfonylurea or insulin may cause low blood sugar. 
It's time to turn things around. Lower your blood sugar with Invokana. Imagine loving your numbers. There's only one Invokana. Ask your doctor about it by name. Whenever I try to grow out my hair, strands always break off. But Pantene is making my hair practically unbreakable. The Pro-V formula makes every inch stronger, so I can love my hair longer. Strong is beautiful. Pantene. When you've got nausea, heartburn, indigestion, upset stomach, diarrhea. Nausea, heartburn, indigestion, upset stomach, diarrhea. Here's Pepto-Bismol. Ah. Nausea, heartburn, indigestion, upset stomach, diarrhea. Now, Melissa Constanzer with First Alert Weather. 724 Sunday morning and it's a wet one out there. Lots of rainfall working across the area. The strongest thunderstorms though, or the only thunderstorms I should say that have cloud to ground lightning have been just around the Dolphin Island, Fort Morgan area, as you see now working into Fort Morgan, uh, just the tip of the peninsula. So we have some very heavy rainfall even a pretty strong thunderstorm with gusty winds being reported. So all this is moving off to the north, east northeast, I should say, at about 25 miles per hour. So in the next half hour, as you get to the 59 corridor, that's where you will see, be seeing some of that heavy rainfall. We take a live look east from Gulf Shores, excuse me, west from Gulf Shores, and that's that storm kind of working in the gray in the distance there. So a lot going on this morning. Gulf Quest Maritime Museum sitting at 57 degrees. And just now we do have an update that there is a severe thunderstorm warning. My guess is it's on that thunderstorm that I just showed you. So, well, of course, we'll keep you updated on that throughout the morning. But the heaviest rainfall moving in right now with some gusty winds of more near forecast in a few minutes. Thank you, Melissa. In consumer headlines, if you drive a Ford, you may want to listen up. This morning, the car company is recalling more than 680,000 cars because the seatbelts can malfunction. The recall affects certain 2014 to 2016 Ford Fusions and 2013 to 2015 Lincoln MKZs. Owners can take their vehicles in for a free repair. Two injuries have been linked to the faulty seatbelts. And good news for car dealerships overall. Auto sales surging in November. Sales were up nearly 4%. Americans took advantage of big Black Friday discounts. With one more month to go in the year, the auto industry has a chance to match or exceed last year's sales of more than 17 million vehicles. Chocolate lovers may be riding less of a sugar high after indulging in Nestle chocolate. The candy maker announcing it is cutting back the amount of sugar in its chocolate by 40%. Get that. They claim the taste will not be affected. Its researchers have discovered that by hollowing out sugar crystals, sugar can be made sweeter in smaller quantities. Nestle is planning to patent that technology. Harper Lee's hometown is trying to turn the small city into a big tourist attraction. We'll show you what's on tap for the place that inspired the character Atticus Finch. More coming up. Time now, 727 on this Sunday morning. Time to vote for your favorite Mo on WKRG's Facebook page. Enjoy smoked barbecue and local seafood at Catfish Junction. Or let us cater your next event or host your special occasion in our spacious banquet room. The Catfish Junction, a local favorite. I-65 and exit 13 in Saraland. You deal with the wrapping. Let the UPS store deal with getting it there. Come in today and ask our certified packing experts about our pack and ship guarantee. Well, hello there, gorgeous. You, my friend, are no salad. A burger smothered in A1 butter topped with sizzling steak and crispy onions for just a buck ninety-nine? That's high fashion flavor at a thrift store price. The A1 buttery steak burger. Steak Swiss and A1 butter for just a buck ninety-nine. Checkers and rallies. Fast foodies know the deal. 
We're celebrating the 21st year of Magic Christmas and Lights at Bell & Graff Gardens and Home. Magic Christmas and Lights, one of the nation's best outdoor light shows, is a Gulf Coast holiday tradition like no other. With more than 1,000 set pieces, 3 million lights, and 15 scenes set out on a walking tour throughout the 65-acre garden estate. It's guaranteed to get you into the holiday spirit. Open nightly from 5 to 9 p.m. through December 31st. Closed Christmas and New Year's days. Purchase tickets at bellandgraff.org. It's all about you, you, you. Truckloads of new 2017 Subarus have arrived at Kobe Subaru for the Subaru Share the Love event. Lease a 2017 Subaru Outback for $229 a month, and Subaru will donate $250 to your choice of five different charities, including Feeding the Gulf Coast. At Kobe, it's all about you. It's all about you, you, you. Complimentary maintenance included. Dear Santa, every year you fill all our stockings with the cool spin brush. Mom says it's tradition, so this year I want you to have a tradition too. With all those cookies, you're going to need it. Oh, give the gift of smiles with Arm & Hammer Spin Brush. Enjoy smoke barbecue and local seafood at Catfish Junction. Or let us cater your next event or host your special occasion in our spacious banquet room. The Catfish Junction, a local favorite. I-65 and exit 13 in Saraland. Good morning to you, Gulf Coast. Here's a quick look outside. One of our News 5 Gulf Quest cameras taking a look at foggy, rainy skies over there on the Mobile Riverfront this morning. So watch out for rain and thunderstorms out there today. Thank you so very much for watching. I'm Chad Petrie, and we've got a News 5 crime alert for you this morning for Pensacola and the surrounding area. Pensacola police need your help finding a man who shot at an officer Friday night. Now, this incident happening in the area of Torres Avenue and Tunis Street. Police went looking for the suspect after they say he approached a woman in a car with a gun. Officer Matthew Mercado found the suspect on 6th Avenue near Tunis Street. Now, the suspect fired one shot at the officer, then ran away. The officer wasn't injured in the shooting, but if you have any information, you're asked to call the Pensacola Police Department. In political news, sources close to President-elect Donald Trump's transition team say the president is moving away from two frontrunners for Secretary of State, former New York City Mayor Rudy Giuliani and Mitt Romney. Mr. Trump still has to fill more than half his cabinet. Meanwhile, Trump's conversation with Taiwan's president is still a source of controversy. He's the first president-elect or president to speak with a Taiwanese leader since diplomatic relations with the country were ended in 1979. The conversation led China to lodge a diplomatic protest with the United States. Former Alabama Governor George Wallace is the subject of a new book by a local author. It's entitled George Wallace and Enigma. Mary Palmer was at Barnes & Noble on the Eastern Shore Saturday signing copies of her book. Now, the author interviewed Wallace before he died in 1998. It's a biography, and Palmer says readers will learn things they didn't know about the governor. She said, for one, he apologized later in life for his racist views during his political career. I know that nobody's perfect, and while he had his faults, when you do apologize, that's hard to do. And I think it's probably a little bit harder for men and the women. I may get in trouble for saying that, but I think it's easier for women sometimes. And I think that's noble when you can do that, and it shows a true sincerity. Palmer described Wallace as charismatic and said he enjoyed the thrill of running for office. Plans to transform Monroeville into Harper Lee's iconic Maycomb from To Kill a Mockingbird they're in the works. News 5's Emily DeVoe confirmed the plans with one of the developers and has this report from the little town of Monroeville. The town of Monroeville is already marked by mockingbirds on businesses and snippets of Harper Lee's beloved book. But nearly a year after the author passed away, plans are in the works to turn this small town into a much bigger tourist destination. Fans of To Kill a Mockingbird already make the pilgrimage here to see the old Monroe County Courthouse behind me. But imagine if you could walk inside places like Atticus Finch's house or Boo Radley's place. That's part of the idea behind the trail. What do you want for Christmas? Play-Doh and a baby doll. The attraction will be called the Harper Lee Trail. It will feature a museum and replicas of the book's most iconic houses. And people who live here say they're excited about the possibility. It's a great opportunity for folks to 
uh, come back to Monroeville and uh, see more things that are uh, available here in this beautiful small town. I think it's absolutely a great idea. The volunteers in Monroeville have worked for so many years, for so long, promoting Monroeville and the Harper Lee novel, and I think it is a great, great idea. So y'all come on to Monroeville. Just like you don't spoil the ending of a good book, they don't have many details to release about the plan just yet, but in a few months, they will. In Monroeville, Emily DeVoe, News 5. And the official plans for the Harper Lee Trail are set to be revealed in March. Taking a look now at national headlines on this Sunday morning, a fire tears through a converted warehouse in Oakland, California, leaving at least nine people dead Friday night. But officials say at least two dozen more are missing. Could be as many as 40 killed in that fire. The rubble of the building was seen there. The blaze reportedly broke out during a party. People trapped inside the building. They had a difficult time escaping because the only stairway leading to the first floor was made of wooden pallets. The warehouse was illegally converted into artist studios. Now, Oakland officials opened an investigation last month into the warehouse after neighbors filed complaints about people living in the building illegally. To Philadelphia now, where foam, not snow, flooded the streets after a transformer blowout. Officials received calls about an explosion at an electrical substation Saturday afternoon. So its fire suppression system then released foam that ended up covering the streets. People living in the area were told to take shelter. About 2,700 customers lost power during that incident as utility crews worked to fix that substation. One building collapsed as emergency crews worked to contain a massive fire that broke out in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Officials believe the blaze started in that building before quickly spreading to at least three other structures. Dozens of homes were evacuated. The blaze also burned several cars parked nearby. Two people were treated for minor injuries, and the building where the fire was sparked was under construction. Now, Melissa Constanzer with First Alert Weather. A soggy Sunday, at least that's how we started off, 7.35 right now, and you are looking at the latest radar. Notice a lot of heavy rain working in, basically off to the east-northeast. Now, as this line moves further to the east, we're seeing more moisture stream along it, but the heaviest rain and strongest thunderstorms have actually been down towards the coast, and that's where we have a severe thunderstorm warning issued already. This one is in basically in the southern part of Baldwin County, and this is going to last until 8 a.m. for this area that you see here highlighted in yellow. And of course, this means for us the possibility of some very gusty winds, nearly 40 mile per hour wind speeds. So the radar right now showing the center of the storm really over southern Mobile Bay and Weeks Bay. And as this moves off towards the east northeast, we're going to continue to watch it for rotation. Right now, I'm not seeing very many indications of it. It would be very weak if it does. But as of now, it's just looking like a lot of straight line gusty winds. Your forecast or rather your live look out Orange Beach as you look off towards the west. Certainly that's where that clouds and the thunderstorms moving in. Uh, you can see all the dark clouds out there and our alpha insurance camera from Daphne as we look towards the west southwest catching the northern part of that storm here in the distance. So heavy rainfall out there this morning, even some lightning. Our surface analysis showing that this is all part of a front which is centered back, the center of the storm rather, back in Texas. This is going to take a while to lift through the area, but as it does over the next few days, expect more rain, more thunderstorms, and possibly severe weather. Our risk for today, low. A marginal risk for severe weather right along the coastline here as we go through the morning hours, I think is what this risk is focusing on. And that's going to be all the way at the bottom of our severe weather outlook. So of course, keep in mind the threat is there for severe weather, but not overly high. And the biggest threat here, damaging winds, winds of 60 miles per hour to maybe even 70 or 80 at certain times. But again, that's the biggest threat here, just straight line winds. We need the rain. We're getting it this morning. Still 5 to 10 inches below average for our area this time of year. So again, we need that rain. And it's coming in with and fighting a dry easterly wind. But as we go through the day, we'll see a more southerly turn to these winds. And they stay strong. That keeps seas around 3 to 5 feet and a high risk for rip currents along area beaches. So not a swimming or a boating day. Right now, temperatures in the 60s. Even some 70s on the board, 71 in Gulf Shores, but it's 50s inland, 51 in Leakesville, as well as 55 in Evergreen. 
Your forecast through the next few hours showing this band pretty well defined as it goes across the area the morning and early afternoon. After that, scattered less as far as widespread rainfall through the rest of the day and even into tonight. But tomorrow morning, we start to see it pick back up. And then as we go through the day tomorrow, certainly a lot of scattered showers and thunderstorms, maybe even some severe thunderstorms. We'll keep an eye on that through, for you throughout the day today. Temperatures in the lower 70s. That's where we top off today with that southeast breeze. And as we go through your extended forecast, an 80% chance of rain today. We do it all again tomorrow, but that's going to be off and on throughout the entire day. And then finally, Tuesday morning is when a front finally clears this out. We dry out and we're in the 70s, but notice another front comes through Thursday. That makes it chilly by Friday. Thank you, Melissa. And we are here in the Toy Center this morning. We'd be remiss if we didn't mention the great toy drive. So we start small with little gifts. This is a robot dinosaur right here, but we expand. We get bigger and it's all thanks to you. So if you're out shopping this weekend, Maybe you can pick up a little extra something for the Great Toy Drive. Anything helps us out. We appreciate you getting together with your friends at the office, maybe your Bible study group, any groups. We get a lot of help from different organizations as well. And we also get help from our Great Toy Drive partners. They include the Salvation Army, Toys for Tots, Air Specialty, Baldwin EMC, Bugmaster, Wind Creek Casino and Hotel Atmore, Zaxby's, and of course Mix 99.9. .9. And we thank everybody for their support. Coming up, the Jaguars get a win and they are bowl eligible. We'll have more on that story coming up. Time now, 739 on this Sunday morning. Time to vote for your favorite Mo on WKRG's Facebook page. People are both soft and strong, which is why our products are too. Angel Soft. Okay, guys, we need a big drive. Thanks, big folks. drive? You can score a big savings at AutoNation Sales Drive. Now go get them. Oh, and try a yellow right halfback screen on two. Right now, make no payments for 90 days on new cars and trucks. And get 20% off new Jeeps, Chryslers, and Dodges. Or save $13,250 off new Rams. AutoNation, official sponsor of the AutoNation Cure Bowl. Don't miss the Black Friday event at AutoNation. Meep, meep. We all need help now and then, someone who can make sense of all the overwhelming decisions dealing with health care issues. Community Insurance Partners is here to do just that. We take the time to walk you through the details so you can make a confident choice. We'll even check to see if you qualify for additional assistance for federal, state, or local programs. Call us today and one of our many licensed agents can visit you in your home or at our office located on Cottage Hill Road. Community Insurance Partners, health care is our business. Hey guys, are you looking for something special for that special someone? Unique Vintage Estate Jewelry, Luke Coyne has you covered. Come check out our large selection of estate jewelry, large diamonds, Rolex watches, and truly one-of-a-kind pieces. Since 1963, Loop Coin and Jewelry has served the Gulf Coast in all your buying and selling needs. So come see us today at Loop Coin and Jewelry at Government and Azalea in the Skyline Shopping Center. Hi, I'm David Green with the law firm of Green & Phillips. Our family is excited to join the great toy drive with WKRG. With bicycles being such a big part of Christmas, Green & Phillips is pleased to be the safety sponsor for the toy drive again this year. Our firm will provide helmets for every bike donated so you and your loved ones can have a fun and safe Christmas. From the Green & Phillips family to yours, Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Baldwin Denture Center proudly offers one-day denture service. Stop whistling Dixie. We have affordable prices so you save money. Arrive in the morning and leave that afternoon with your new dentures. Not all dentures are created equal. Feel the difference. For fast, affordable care, call Baldwin Denture Center. Stand back, you hear? Ah. Mm. Break out the syrup. Because Denny's new fluffier, tastier, better Rudolph pancakes are here for the holidays. 
Welcome to the Gulf Coast. Here's another quick look outside one of our News 5 Gulf Quest cameras taking a look at gray, rainy skies over the Mobile Riverfront this morning. Thank you so very much for watching. I'm Chad Petrie. And while the rain is coming down hard, filters work hard in your home every day. That's why it's important to change them so they don't work your electric bill too hard. In this hour's Ask Danny, we talk about finding the right one for your home. All right, so this next question is, I see so many types of furnace filters at the store. Are the expensive ones worth it? Well, it depends on how, how expensive they get. First of all, if you go through the grocery store and you see these 2 to $3 filters that are sitting there, leave them alone. They're completely worthless. You can actually take one of those filters and get some playground sand, and it'll drop right through it. How could it possibly filter everything you need to filter within your home? Also, the importance of a furnace filter. Any, all the air in your home, all the cubic footage of air in your home is passing through that filter two to three times per hour. That's See, a lot. That's a lot. You think about all that movement that's taking place, but also think about it as that first line of defense against the um, allergens, pet dander, all of the dust that you have floating through your house. You can catch that. My recommendation is an electrostatic filter. It's going to cost you about 12 to $15, but instead of every month, you only have to change this one every three months. And it's much, much better, readily available at all the home centers, retail places. But an electrostatic filter is the way to go. Now, electrostatic means it's been charged with electrostatic charge, but it doesn't mean you have to have anything plugged into it. It works so much better than all the others. And I've seen so many different filters out there, some that last several months, some that are only meant for a month. Mm -hmm. Is it really, does it really make a difference for you to pick a multi-month filter versus one that lasts only a month? The thing, the reason that uh, they're, they're multi-month is that they're pleated. So you have, because of the pleated nature and the construction of it, you have actually more surface that you're able to use for the filtration. So it's definitely Definitely worth it from that standpoint. And also the washable ones were real popular for a little while. Leave those alone. You cannot clean that sufficiently and it's just not filtering it properly. Another misconception is that some of the more expensive filters, the pleated filters, may put more of a strain on your heating or cooling system. Not the case at all. The strain comes in when you don't change it. So maybe put a little sticker on your refrigerator to remind you when you need to replace it next. That way you don't have to worry about it and you can be a smart owner by doing that. Always remember to change those filters. They can save you money in the long run. Danny, thank you very much. Sure. Glad to be here. And if you've got questions, Danny's got answers. Today's homeowner is later this morning at 1030 on our sister station this morning, the CW55. They're also looking for homeowners to share their projects on air. So if you'd like to be a part of their show, you can contact them online at todayshomeowner.com slash locations. Now, News 5 Sports. In sports, the final pairings for the four-team college football playoffs will be announced today, and you can count on Alabama to take a spot. The defending national champions won the Southeastern Conference for the third straight year yesterday. The tide rolled over the Florida Gators 54-16 in the Georgia Dome. Florida took an early 7-0 lead. Alabama's offense started slow, finishing the first quarter with minus 7 yards. But a pair of interceptions and a block punt for a touchdown gave the Tide a 16-9 lead going into the second quarter. Alabama held the Gator offense in the third and took the ball 98 yards down the field to make the score 40-16. Two more late touchdowns sealed the Tide's victory. I'm so very proud of our team for, first of all, having an undefeated season, but secondly, for winning the SEC championship. I think to do that three years in a row is a really significant accomplishment, especially uh, these guys who have been challenged all year long uh, by playoff game after playoff game. But this was the first championship game we had, and uh, they certainly responded well. Alabama scored the second most points in SEC game championship history. The Tide is the only SEC team with fewer than four losses on the season as well. The South Alabama Jaguars season isn't over just yet. The Jags beat New Mexico State 35 to 28 Saturday, making them bowl eligible. Now the Jags scored 21 points in the fourth quarter to clinch that win. Xavier Johnson rushed for 154 yards and three touchdowns. Quarterback Dallas Davis threw for 239 yards. Head coach Joey Jones was proud of his team's efforts and their determination to finish strong. Being able to go to a bowl is a special thing. We told them that. And, uh... You know, they're going to experience that, and I'm so proud of those guys, so proud of those seniors that get to experience a bowl uh, for the second time in three years. We didn't fold under pressure. We got behind 21-14.
we won the fourth quarter, and that's what, that's what we've been all about all year. The Jaguars finished the regular season 6-6. Six and six. New Mexico State fell to 3-9 and nine on their season. Number three Clemson narrowly defeated number 19 Virginia Tech in the Atlantic Coast Conference Championship game, 42 to 35 Saturday night. Now Clemson's quarterback Deshaun Watson increased his chances of winning the Heisman Trophy by passing for three touchdowns and running for two more. The team will likely find themselves in the college football playoffs and will look to redeem themselves after last year's loss to Alabama in the national championship game. Clemson will wait for official word on the college football playoffs today, and the national semifinals begin on New Year's Eve. In the biggest comeback in Big Ten, Big Ten title game history, number eight Penn State beats number six Wisconsin 38 to 31. Penn State rallied from a 21-point first-half deficit to claim its first title in eight years. Trace McSorley threw for four touchdown passes to help clinch the win. He finished 22 of 31 for 384 yards. Now the team will anxiously await to see if the selection committee rewards them with a playoff spot today. The South Alabama basketball team hosted Middle Tennessee Saturday. The Jags were coming off a big road win against Southern Mississippi Wednesday. However, the Blue Raiders built a 17-point lead in the first half and held on to win 67-55. Ken Williams and Don Mupo Kelly led the Jags with 12 points each. This is South Alabama's second loss of the season. In NFL action today, the Miami Dolphins will take on the Baltimore Ravens at noon today right here on CBS. The Miami Dolphins beat the Ravens last year and have won their last six games. The Ravens are coming off a win against Cincinnati. And of course, you can watch those games again right here on News 5. Now, Melissa Constanzer with First Alert Weather. It is just about 7.50 on a Sunday morning. We do have a severe thunderstorm warning in the area. This is for southern Baldwin County. As you see the area highlighted in yellow, it's going to last until 8 o'clock. So just a few more minutes here. What we are watching is this strong thunderstorm that's just now moving out of the Weeks Bay area and in towards what is just south of Point Clear and parts of Foley, uh, Magnolia Springs area, also seeing that thunderstorm right now. So it's kind of phasing apart, but still a lot of powerful winds with this, some gust of more than 60 miles per hour possible. This is all part of a much bigger chain here. We got a lot of rain spreading across the entire area. If you're in the Florida Panhandle and don't have it yet, you will later on today. And I should mention, don't just focus on that severe thunderstorm warning. There is more rain and some strong thunderstorms coming in out of the Gulf. So the biggest threat of severe weather through the morning will be right along our coastal counties as those thunderstorms come in. Today's forecast, we actually see less rain through the afternoon and evening hours, but through the morning and midday, that rain fairly widespread as this main line of showers and thunderstorms comes through. Again, keep in mind, some of those thunderstorms may be severe with gusty winds, so we'll keep a close tabs on it for you here at WKRG. More on your forecast coming up in a few minutes. Thank you, Melissa. Coming up, of course, Alabama fans celebrating after that big SEC win last night. We'll have highlights and more straight ahead in five things you need to know. Time now, 751 on this Sunday morning. Family Feud, weekdays at 4 on WKRG News 5. Get the 2017 Toyota you've been wishing for during Toyota Thought. Hurry in. This event ends January 3rd. During Toyota Thought, get 0% APR for 60 months plus $1,000 holiday bonus cash on a new 2017 Toyota Corolla. Toyota, let's go places. Face to FaceTime beats face on phone time anytime. It's time to say goodbye, social media. Hello, socializing. Time to put down the phone and pick up the conversation. Enjoy a small frappe, latte, mocha, or hot chocolate for two bucks. Make any hour a happy one with sweet McCafe treats all day, only at McDonald's. Here's to staying connected in person. They say good things come in small packages, and Midtown Pharmacy is a perfect example. For over 30 years, Midtown Pharmacy has been serving the people of Mobile. Locally owned and operated, we take service to another level. No long waits, prompt answers to questions, and always service with a smile. And check out our new app where you can order refills with the touch of a button. Go to Pharmacy Health Connect and download the app. Then set it to Midtown Pharmacy Mobile. Midtown Pharmacy, locally owned and locally loved. 2152 Airport Boulevard near the Loop. 
Toyota Thon is on at Palmer's Toyota Superstore. Get Toyota Thon pricing on over a thousand new Toyotas. Now is your best time to buy at Palmer's Toyota. Drive the new 2017 Tacoma Double Cab for $173 a month. $173 a month for Tacoma Double Cabs. Drive new 2017 RAV4s for $192 a month. $192 a month for RAV4s. Toyota Thon is on at the all new Palmer's Toyota Superstore, the family store. You gotta see this place. Selling or trading your car can sometimes be more of a hassle than it's worth. I'm Wallace Davis with Volunteers of America. We can turn every donated car into a vehicle of hope for people in need. We'll quickly pick up your donated car, boat, RV, or motorcycle, free of charge, handle all the paperwork, and you can get a great tax deduction. It's really that simple. Call now to see if donating your vehicle makes sense for you. Welcome to Toyotathon. What is... Oh, that? That always happens when Toyotathon is on. Get 0% APR for 72 months plus a $1,000 holiday bonus cash on a 2017 Toyota Camry. Toyota, let's go places. I'm Chief Meteorologist Alan Seals. Get your Pensacola weather one hour earlier weeknights on the CW55 News at 9. Your new choice for weather in Pensacola. Here are five things you need to know before you head out to church or wherever on this Sunday morning. Pensacola police looking for a man who shot at an officer, then ran away Friday night. Incident happening in the area of Torres Avenue and Tunis Street. The officer was not injured in that shooting, but anyone with information is asked to call the Pensacola Police Department. The Alabama Crimson Tide claiming the Southeastern Conference title for the third straight year. Yesterday, the Tide rolled over the Florida Gators 54-16. Alabama scored the second most points in SEC championship history. The victory ensures the team will claim a spot in the college football playoffs. President-elect Donald Trump still needing to pick half his cabinet, including his nominee for Secretary of State. Sources close to the transition team say Mr. Trump is moving away from two frontrunners, former New York City Mayor Rudy Giuliani and Mitt Romney. Meanwhile, Trump's conversation with Taiwan's president has led China to lodge a diplomatic protest with the United States. The Baghead Tunnel will be closed until Monday morning at 5. If you plan on traveling across the bay, you'll have to use the Wallace Tunnel or Africatown Bridge. The closure will allow Alabama Power to continue to conduct routine maintenance right there. A fire ripped through a converted warehouse in Oakland, California, leaving at least nine people dead Friday night. Officials say at least two dozen more are missing in that rubble. The blaze reportedly broke out during a party, and the warehouse was illegally converted into artist studios. And we're just about done here on News 5 this morning. Let's check out what's next with CBS Sunday Morning. Coming up, we remember the attack on Pearl Harbor 75 years later. We'll also visit an exhibit of works by artist Henri Matisse. We check in on actor Billy Bob Thornton and the Rolling Stones sing the blues. We'll talk with Mick Jagger and Keith Richards. Sunday Morning is just ahead. Now, Melissa Constanzer with First Alert Weather. A severe thunderstorm warning in effect for southern Baldwin County, that area that you see in yellow. That's going to last just a few more minutes here. They may reissue because it's this thunderstorm moving across southern Mobile Bay and now into the Magnolia Springs area that has gusty winds, maybe as much as 60 mile per hour damaging winds. So keep an eye on that. The rain still persistent all the way up through Thomasville and Interstate 65 corridor. But as you look off towards the south, the severe weather threat is going to come in from the coast. That means Dolphin Island and further off towards the towards the east as we go through the Florida Panhandle. That's where we'll watch for maybe some severe weather this morning. Less rain later today, scattered showers and thunderstorms and that extended outlook showing our rain chances stay strong into tomorrow. In fact, a bigger threat of severe weather tomorrow. So we'll keep tabs right here at the WKRG Weather Center on it. Of course, and uh, Thomas Keyboy will be back later tonight, keeping an eye on it as well, along with Ashley Knight. And we want everybody out there, thank you for watching, and have a good day today. Christmas is when God showed up as a 